Hi. Um, last year, um, I didn't get uh, too many Christmas cards. Um, actually, I didn't get any Christmas cards. But um, and I think it was because I sent my Christmas cards, you know, really close to Christmas, and it didn't give the people who received them enough time to kind of prepare and 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 send me Christmas cards in return. So this past year, I sent my Christmas cards at Thanksgiving, much earlier. So that gives people a lot of time. So this year, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to get a lot of Christmas cards. So I'm going out to the mailbox right now to have a look and see what I got. Yeah, so I'm just on my way out to the mailbox now to check for the Christmas cards. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have quite a few. Huh, um, well there's none in there. Maybe next year I'll mail them at Halloween. Okay, what's a squirrel's favorite flowering shrub? I don't know, what is a squirrel's favorite flowering shrub? A rodent dendron. And now, a musical blast from a Christmas video past. It's this Christmas you don't have much money to spend. But you've got lots of people to buy Christmas gifts for. Remember that nothing says Merry Christmas like a gift from the dollar store. If your Christmas shopping list's long, but your budget is limited, don't despair, for you are in luck. You can get everyone on your Christmas gift list a great gift. And each gift will only cost you a buck. This Christmas you don't have much money to spend for lots of people to buy Christmas gifts for. Christmas. What a stupid holiday. Unbelievable. All these cards and bows and ribbons. Fat guy in a red suit. A fat guy in a red suit, huh? I know one gourd head that's going to have an empty Christmas stocking this Christmas morning. My God, would you just look at this stuff? Oh my God, what is this? Look at this. Trash. What kind of holiday is this? Don't like Christmas, huh, Pumpkinhead? 
Why don't you go back to the pumpkin patch, then? All these cards? Jesus, look at that. What? What is this? Noel, what does that even mean? What's this? A, a flamingo with a hat on? Oh, my God. This is just ridiculous. Oh, my God. This, this is just beyond belief. Let it snow. Merry Christmas. Oh. Think your holiday's better than Christmas, do you? Those are big words from someone with pie filling for brains. I can't even believe this. Thing. Look at this guy. Who's this guy? What a loser. Oh, my God. What a jerk. Look at this guy here. Unbelievable loser. Actually, he's right about that. Christmas. Get over yourself. Come on. Jeez. Christmas. Now, uh, why don't you just get out of here, you fugitive from the produce section? <laughs> Tell me 
Sorry, nothing says Christmas like a bunch of leprechauns. And an ice cold six pack of Guinness. You know, I had to call my therapist. This happens every holiday season, and it's like, um, yeah, my mother's like, you know, why don't you do something with your life? Why don't you get over this whole thing? And, you know, you're like, and so I told her, my therapist told me that it's not a problem with me, it's a problem with others, and that I'm just a late bloomer that hasn't reached my, my, my form of self-actualization yet. And my mother's like, late bloomer, my ass, you're way past being a late bloomer. You're, you're dead on the vine and, and withered, and you should be raked into the soil as fertilizer or, or you know, thrown in the compost pit. So, you know, after she said that, I tried to call my therapist, but she's away for the holidays, so she gave me these puppets. Uh, to use while she's away, and she is a genuine therapist. My mother's like, she's not even a therapist, she's like a witch doctor. But she, she went to an online school, and she's actually got a certificate that she printed off, so she showed me that. But she said, you know, I could use these, these therapy puppets if she's not there, so I'm just going to do that quickly. And Why can't you do anything right? Why couldn't you upload those videos to YouTube? Yes, all the people were waiting to see those videos. You said they were going to have them on YouTube, and you didn't do it. I know, why couldn't you do it? What's the matter with you? You can't do anything right. Why did you upload those videos? What is the matter with you? The Boy Who Lived in a Book, A Christmas Tale Once upon a time, there was a boy who lived in a book. But because he lived in a book, he wasn't a real boy, but rather an illustration of a boy. Every day, the illustration of a boy who lived in a book would look out at the real world beyond the pages, and the real world seemed to him to be so grand and exciting that he wished he could be a real boy and live in the real world. I wish I was a real boy instead of just an illustration of a boy. Then I could live in the real world instead of in this book. So one Christmas, the illustration of a boy wrote a letter to Santa asking for a single gift to be turned into a real boy so he could live in the real world. And since he was such a good boy, Santa gave him the gift he asked for. I used to just be an illustration of a boy living in this book. But now, I'm a real boy living in the real world. But the boy found the real world to be not so wonderful as it appeared, and the real people turned out to be quite nasty. So he asked Santa to turn him back into an illustration of a boy so he could go back to his home in his book. The real world kind of sucks! And the moral of this Christmas story is, be careful what you ask Santa for because you just might get it. Snowflakes are falling, friends and relations with presents come calling. Out on the sidewalk, carolers are trawling, songs of goodwill and cheer. Christmas time is here. Chestnuts are roasting and popcorn is popping. The stores are full of shoppers, Christmas shopping. Tiny tots dream about Santa Claus stopping by with his sleigh and reindeer. Christmas time is here. It's Christmas season, a season so very pleasing. What? Better reason for singing a Christmas song. Christmas is coming, 
the snowflakes are falling, kids are out sledding, skating, and snowballing. Out on the highway, lots of cars hauling, Christmas trees appear. Christmas time is here. It's Christmas season, a season so very pleasing. What better reason for singing a Christmas song? Christmas is coming, the snowflakes are falling, friends and relations with presents come calling. Out on the sidewalk, carolers are trolling, songs of goodwill and cheer. Christmas time is here, what a wonderful time of the year. Christmas time is here, Christmas time is here, Christmas time is here, Christmas time is here. It's nothing but a big pain in my keister. Oh, are we still on? Christmas time is here. Hi there, everybody. It's that time of the year again, Christmas time. A.K.A. of my birthday, right? <laughs> I'd just like to thank all you guys for coming to my annual birthday bash. You guys, I gotta tell you, you are the best. You are the cream of the crop, right? The salt of the earth, am I right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This is my 2009th birthday. Can you believe it? That's right. It's the first decade of my third millennium. Can you believe it? But let me tell you, I stopped counting at the second millennium. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I bet I don't look a day over 2,000, right? <laughs> Anyways, again, I'd like to thank you guys for coming. And, um, you know, we're going to have a fabulous time, fabulous time. And, um, you know, I, I was thinking, uh, I was reading back on my life story. You know, in other words, the New Testament, right? <laughs> And it always made me laugh how everything gets lost in translation, right? Goes from the Aramaic to the Hebrew to the Greek to the Latin, you know, and then to the English. Who knows where it goes, right? But a couple of things that really make me laugh, boy, I'll tell you, there's one. It's, uh, it's about, uh, you know, my profession, right? They say, oh, yeah, Jesus, right? He was a carpenter. Come on, a carpenter? How many wood buildings have you seen in the Holy Land? Come on, a carpenter. <laughs> I'd have to work miracles to be a carpenter, right? No, the translation is wrong. I wasn't a carpenter. I was a caterer, as was my stepdad, Joseph. What a great guy. My stepdad, Joseph, great guy. Not such a great caterer, though. Joseph and son, that was us, boy. And I'll tell you, he catered a few of my events later on in my career, you know, and boy, <laughs> What a disaster. One of them was the Sermon on the Mount, which you might remember if you've read your Bible. And there was a multitude of people coming to see me, a multitude, you know, thousands and thousands. So my dad, well, my stepdad, Joseph, he shows up to, to cater the event, right? And what does he show up with? Five fishes and five loaves. I'm like, Joseph, what are you thinking? You know, oh my God, it was crazy, crazy. Of course, you know, I turned on the magic and, and we got through it okay, but oh my God, my stepdad, Joseph, great guy, bad caterer, right? Another instance that comes to mind is at that wedding. You may remember when they ran out of wine and my mom's like, Jesus, you know, can you do something about this? Your stepdad didn't bring enough wine. This is going to look really bad for the business. So I'm like, okay, Mom, and I turn the water into wine. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, a little bit more magic, right? A little help from my real dad on that one, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, my stepdad, Joseph, great guy bad caterer. Oh yeah, and I'll tell you another thing that gets lost in translation is at my birth. They're always talking about the three wise men. Oh my God, it wasn't the three wise men. It was one guy, and he was from the firm of wise men, wise men, and wise men, attorneys at law. 
My stepdad, Joseph, was going to sue the innkeeper because he had booked in advance. He had booked a room for us, that is me. I wasn't born yet, but, you know, I was going to be born there. My mom, Mary, and Joseph. And then he had booked a stable for the donkey, except something happened with the reservation at the inn, and all they had was the stable reservation and no room for us. Boy, was my stepdad sick. So, yeah, he called Wiseman, Wiseman, and Wiseman, and he was going to slap a lawsuit on those innkeepers. But in the end, it just kind of blew over because we were only there for a couple of days, you know. And after he got that frankincense and myrrh and everything, he was okay. But, yeah, <laughs> again, Christmas, you know, what a time, what a time. A lot of memories, a lot of birthday parties, you know what I mean? A lot of birthday parties. But, anyways... Thanks for coming, you guys. Again, you guys are the best, and hopefully we'll see you next year. My dad will, right? <laughs> okay, now, we'll see you. Merry Christmas, everybody, and uh, happy birthday to me, right? <laughs> okay, Dad, take me up. I've had a few beers. I'm feeling a little bit warmer, but it's really cold out. I'm going to have another one. Just to keep you warm. Good evening. Pritchard Sabington Smythe here. I have a few spare moments before I attend the gala premiere of the Nutcracker at Lincoln Center here in New York City. I attend every year at Christmas, you know, with my special lady. So, anyway, I have a Christmas poem that I've written about modern Christmases that I, I thought you might be interested in hearing. And um, if you've got a few minutes yourself, I'd like to read it to you. I'm a bit dry, so uh, just excuse me one more moment. <clears throat> mm. Yes, I attend the, the Nutcracker Gala premiere every Christmas season with my very special lady. What? What? Yes, Mother. Yes, Mother. I know it's almost curtain time, Mother. I'm hurrying. I'll be there in just a few moments, Mother. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking now. Oh, his special lady is his mother. He lives with his mother. Well, my friend, let me tell you something. You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, it's quite the opposite. My mother lives with me. And let me tell you another thing. There are plenty of special ladies that would have attended the gala premiere of the Nutcracker Suite with me if I had, if I had, if I had chosen to have them attend with me. Because, you know, I'm quite an eligible bachelor. Quite an eligible bachelor, indeed. As a matter of fact, I joined a dating agency called Tip... 
top dating, which actually turned out to be a rock above from dating. And there were many, many, many eligible women who, who, who wished to get to know me better. However, I didn't wish to get them to know them better. So I thought it would be quite nice to take my mother. <laughs> anyway, I've got this prom... What? Yes, mother, I'm coming. I'm coming. I know you hate to be late for the ballet, mother. I know you hate to be late. I'll be there just a moment. I'll be there just a minute. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've got a poem. I've got a poem for you. I'm just it's a bit dry. Let's go see what I'm doing. Yeah. Anyway, yes. I've got a poem that I'd like to read you about Christmas. It's entitled Christmas Time is Drawing Me Out. <clears throat> Christmas time is drawing near. Christmas time is drawing near. Soon Christmas season will be here. With gifts to choose and buy and wrap, you'll give people great gifts. And what do they give you back? Crap. What? What? Yes! Yes, I heard you, Mother. I know it's nearly curtain time. I'm coming. I'm coming, Mother. I'm coming. I'm coming, Mother. I'm coming. I'm coming. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm coming, Mother. Thank you.